Hi, I'm Joe DiMatteo of the Ask the Pharmacist group. I do a radio broadcast daily. Maybe many of you know about it, maybe some of you don't. Naturopath, pharmacist, clinical nutritionist. You can see a lot of our information, a lot of these other teaching videos on AskJoeDiMatteo.com is our website. I do um, and have done a number of these teaching concepts, everything from premenstrual syndrome to mammography and some of the downsides and dangers of mammography screening, um, all the way through to headaches and migraines. An area that I'd like to cover today covers a very basic area that affects all of our lives, soaps. And I just have a couple um, real basic thought processes out here. I don't have one of those typical pump uh, dispensers that contains some of the ingredients that I'm going to talk about to you here today, but just a lot of the things that we're used to seeing and we use in our everyday lives, soaps, shampoos, freshening agents, fabric, deodorizers, chemicals. What do these chemicals do? They're a huge problem. Just recent literature and information, just as an example, from Science Direct Experimental Toxicology and Pharmacology 2007, September 24th, states it's documented that there are effects on the thyroid functioning of laboratory animals. These data demonstrate that triclosan, which is a chemical, which is an antibacterial agent that is used as a disinfectant. Now, what is an antibacterial or an antimicrobial? It disrupts the growth, it disrupts the multiplication of bacteria to grow on things, on your hands or on components. Now, triclosan is one that's been around since probably the mid to late 70s. It was first designed to be used in hospital settings, surgical areas, hospitals, etc. So maybe in that setting, I guess I would say I don't know that I really have a problem with it. I don't know that we need it in everyday human life, day-to-day -day cleaning, washing of your hands, etc. This documents that, that triclosan disrupts thyroid homeostasis, thyroid hormone homeostasis in laboratory animals and laboratory mice. This appeared on Elsevier Science Direct, just one of the many studies and pieces of information that I have here. Now, the FDA certainly would state and make the statement that it is not dangerous in the sense that it um, doesn't cause cancer. It's not carcinogenic. But the literature more and more is pointing out that triclosan as one of these antimicrobials, and I'm pretty much picking on triclosan today, but there are others that are antimicrobial, antimicrobial types of cleansing or cleaning agents in everyday hand pump. You um, go to a public restroom. Maybe you have them in your home. You have them in your own bathrooms and literally we're using these antimicrobial agents, do we really need to? I don't believe that we do. Um, it's a synthetic broad spectrum compound, it's not a natural agent. What is wrong with good old fashioned soap and water, which I'll cover certainly in a few minutes. Another area that is of grave concern today is that there's some literature that documents that triclosan may be contaminated with dioxin. Now dioxin is a huge problem. Dioxin, uh, the chemical dioxin, um, has actually been implicated in a number of hormone-mediated, hormone-inducing or endocrine. Endocrine system is your, your hormones that affect bodily and organ function. So your thyroid hormone is part of the endocrine system. Your adrenal glands part of the endocrine system. Your pancreas producing insulin part of the endocrine system and so on. So we have endocrine disruption, much like what we see with this article that comes out of Science Direct and the Journal of Experimental Toxicology and Pharmacology back in 2007, that say that many of these chemicals that we're using in everyday walks of life have hormone disrupting activities, endocrine disrupting activities. We know a couple of things about many of these cleaning agents, many of these antibacterial soaps that you use. Now I'm not talking about um, the type that are used as hand sanitizers. 
Um, those predominantly are an alcohol ethanol based compound. Some of them anywhere from 65% and above and I'm sure they contain some other ingredients. I'm not really talking about those today. Those uh, kind of dry up, evaporate into the air. I don't really know that's our issue or that's our fight today. I'm after more of these these, not the hand sanitizers, but the antibacterial soaps. Whether they uh, claim to be certain soaps that are fresh bursts, kill bacteria, don't let bacteria grow, battle under own arm uh, uh, odors, etc. Why? Because they're killing bacteria. We know a couple of things. That first of all, they're absorbed through the skin. Number two, Many of these compounds, many of these agents are lipophilic. They're lipid loving. They will accumulate in your fat stores. Thirdly, more and more literature is documenting that they can have endocrine or hormone disrupting like activities. Now, the real problem is look at all of the hormone disruptive types of scenarios that we have. We have more and more men and especially women with thyroid hormone abnormalities. We have more and more young women, middle-aged women, young children, and I believe there are a lot of reasons. It's not just from this, but with precocious types of puberty, interferences with endocrine and hormone function. I do not believe that this is the only agent, certainly, that is involved, but it's one of them. In our discussion the next few teachings, the next few videos that we're going to do will very much speak to household types of scenarios. Deodorizing, fabric deodorizing agents, shampoos, deodorant types of soaps. What are we using? How does it affect our health? The other area that, for example, triclosan as one of the agents discussed here today it is under the trade name or falls under the trade name of microband. It's found and used in plastics, clothing, etc. Why? Because it has the ability to not allow bacteria, fungus, etc. to grow in these compounds. So it's termed microband under that trademark. The problem is, once again, on our clothes, we absorb it right through our skin, most certainly. We have huge issues here. Um, I, I think that um, my concerns go beyond uh, maybe just even what we're doing here and what you're experiencing in your life and your family, but also um, many of these compounds are shown to be dispersed and show up in human breast milk as well. We're passing it on, not only in the womb to the infant, but we also are possibly passing it on through and in uh, breast milk production. My last comment here about antibacterial types of soaps before we move on in some of the following videos and teachings, is there any evidence to document that in day-to-day -day life that we need to be using harsh chemicals, chemical compounds, they're impressive, they sound impressive, they're antimicrobial, they're bacteriostatic, doesn't let bacteria grow, quote unquote, the claims by manufacturers. And it's proven to be as such. I think there's enough FDA evidence that proves that they do do this. The issue is, are they really safe? Are there rationale, and is there rationale for us to be using them on a daily basis? <clears throat> I don't think there is. What's wrong with some good old-fashioned soaps that are pretty much a glycerin, hand-milled type of soap? What's, what's wrong with a vitamin E, uh, lavender-based um, glycerin soap? Bottom line, when we're washing our hands, plenty of soap, warm water to the degree that you can stand it, wash vigorously for up to 30 seconds, rinse thoroughly with warm water. <clears throat> that will do every bit as good of a job as many of these antimicrobial types of compounds. These are not known to be harmful. We're talking glycerin. It acts as a surfactant. It coats bacteria 
particles grease dirt and allows it to be whisked and washed away from our tissues do I need to be using antibacterial types of soaps I don't believe so especially with the health consequences I want you to stay tuned we're going to do a whole series of these and then present you with some uh, better natural options why I believe they're safer I believe many of these chemicals that are creating many many problems that we're not even expecting it's known and documented to be a hormone or an endocrine disruptor we know that it gets through the skin you absorb it through we know that it's lipophilic number three meaning that it is lipid loving it'll be stored in your fat stores and then released over time not real sure why we're rolling the dice um, on such agents and on such very uh, powerful chemicals that we're not real sure of the long-term effects oh it may not be mutagenic it may not be carcinogenic it may not cause us to have deformed limbs or cause cancer but is it affecting us in other subtle ways as a population that we're just not being made fully aware of I believe that it is I believe that we are and I'll prove to you over succeeding um, videos as to what else you need to be aware of. Stay tuned for future videos. Go to the website at askjoedematteo.com or tune, tune in to the broadcast that we do on XM Sirius Satellite Radio and some local stations around the country. See you later. Thanks for being with us.